Hello and welcome to this nutrition for sport and exercise video. Uh, today we're going to be looking at lipids or fats as they're more commonly known. Um, so we're going to just uh, find out a little bit about them uh, and a bit about how they may impact with exercise. So let's look at the basics uh, around lipids. Well, lipids as far as their structure have uh, a very similar uh, component to that of carbohydrates. So they have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms associated with them, but they are in a slightly different structure and different ratios in comparison to carbohydrates. When we are looking at lipids in our diet, then really we want to uh, keep around a third or 33% of our diet in the form of fat. This can change a little bit depending on um, the level of or the intensity of exercise uh, and also the type of exercise that you're doing. Um, so an athlete may adjust this slightly but for the average person about a third of their diet should be in the form of fat. When we're looking at that diet and we're looking at uh, how we're ingesting those lipids then we need to be conscious of the three different classes of lipids that there are. Uh, the three classes are saturated, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated uh, and ideally we want to be going down a polyunsaturated uh, route uh, but that doesn't mean that the other two shouldn't be in our diet because they also have important elements to them that your body requires. So let's look at the uh, functions of lipids. So main function of a lipid is as an energy source. So lipids are very high in calories, they give about 9 calories per gram of fat um, and they're particularly good as an energy source when we are either at rest uh, or working at low intensity so they can provide about 80-90% to 90 of our energy needs uh, in that state. So to put it into kind of real terms, if we had a, a 70 kilogram male then approximately 10.5 kilograms of that body weight would be in the form of fat and that's the equivalent of about 120 hours of running uh, uh, with regards to the calorie rich element in the fat. Our second function is protection so much like muscle can protect internal vital organs uh, fat can do the same uh, in uh, giving another layer of protection uh, to any kind of impact uh, to areas of the body that don't have a hard skeletal structure to protect them also. Our third function is insulation, so um, subcutaneous fat or, or fat that's under the skin can be a very good insulator, it can protect us from external environments that are particularly cold um, and it can also help to maintain our internal core temperature. Uh, we do need to be aware though that if we have excessive levels of subcutaneous fat then uh, we can actually have problems from uh, a bit like cooking from the inside, so we just need to be aware that uh, too much is not a good thing and um, s lipids can also help with um, storage of certain vitamins so vitamins like A, D, E and K tend to be stored within fat soluble mechanisms uh, and fat can also be a very good hunger depressor because uh, it takes a while to be digested and therefore it can sit in our stomach for uh, up to kind of three and a half hours and that can help to suppress any hunger that we might have if we take a quick look at the structure then uh, we can see that this is the structure of a saturated fat and we can see that in the middle here that uh, we have single bonds connecting the carbon uh, atoms and therefore that would make it a saturated fat. Saturated fats are normally solid at room temperature. Monounsaturated we've got one double bond here uh, and they tend to be a little bit soft at room te temperature uh, and if we're looking at um, polyunsaturated we've got kind of at least two uh, bonds, double bonds, uh, connecting carbon atoms and therefore that makes them uh, liquid at room temperature. So that's about it for this little uh, video uh, and we'll progress this further in class.